This film is the story of many journeys. Journeys across continental Europe, journeys across different eras of historical time, journeys of perception. It is also the story of the journey from the grape to the cask, from the cask to the bottle, and from the bottle to the table. This is a film about sherry, what often seems to be that most English of drinks, and yet is also often one of the most misunderstood in English culture. This is also the story of my own personal journey to the heart of sherry production, the Marco de la Jerez. From here, the University of East London, which was built on the old royal docks of London. Although it's difficult to see now, it was here in the Royal Docks of London, alongside other English ports like Bristol, that what Shakespeare described as gold in a glass was first introduced to the British. It is also here that many 19th century travellers would have begun their journeys of discovery to a land and a wine that is unique. Sherry has long been a part of life in countries outside of Spain, maybe especially in the United Kingdom, where it first became popular according to some reports, after Sir Francis Drake bought back 3,000 barrels of the stuff in 1587 after sacking Jerez. Shakespeare's anti-hero Falstaff long ago extolled the virtues of this gold in a glass, claiming it both quickened the wit and warmed the blood. Charles Dickens' pet canary received a thimbleful of sherry each morning and lived for 15 years. Many of the larger bodegas or wine cellars here bear very familiar sounding names to the British visitor. And Britain is still the largest importer of sherry, shipping in around 6 million gallons a year. However, it's fair to say that the reputation of sherry has suffered somewhat. In Britain, it has often been seen either as a tipple of the upper classes or a sickly sweet drink served by your grandmother and kept in the cupboard for special occasions. These perceptions are partly because of changing fashions and partly because the majority of sherry drunk in Britain is of the cream or pale cream variety, sweetened for British and international taste. That could be changing, however, with the emergence of a knowledgeable new generation of wine drinkers, young urbanites in the large metropolitan areas where sherry is becoming a fashionable drink. The word is that sherry is back. As the aficionado will know, cream sherries represent the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the different types of fortified wines produced in the Jerez region. I met with César Saldana, head of the Sherry Council in Jerez, who explained this variety in more detail. But basically, just, just to have an idea or, or to, to try to simplify a little bit the uh, tremendous palette of styles, uh, we could say that we have First, uh, two big groups, those wines that are bone dry and the sweet styles, okay? Uh, now, uh, obviously in the, in the drier end, we find the Fino and the Manzanilla. Both of them are wines from the Palomino grape variety. Uh, very good aperitif wines to go with, f with fish, to go with the tapas menus. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's great with ham, for instance. Uh, these are wines that are produced through what they call biological aging with floor, right? So this is why they are so pale in color, so pungent in the nose and so dry in the palate. Then we have all the wines which are still uh, dry, like the Amontillados and Olorosos, but as you can see here, they're darker in color. This is because they go through what we call an oxidative process. These are wines that are aged in contact with the air inside the barrels, so they get more structure, they get more color. They, they, um, they are great wines to go with, uh, for instance, uh, the Amontillado. It, it's, it's my favorite with, uh, with tuna and this, this kind of you know, uh, strong uh, fish or, or even with poultry. 
Uh, Oloroso is great with meat uh, and also uh, a, a very nice wine to go with, uh, with strong cheeses, right? So this, this would be in the, uh, in the dry area of, of sherry wines. Then we have uh, what we call the uh, Vinos Generosos de Licor. That's the blended styles, okay? And here would you have the medium, the cream sherries. These are wines which have been uh, produced based on some of the dry sherries to which we have added, to which we, with which uh, we have assembled uh, some Pedro Jimenez sweet wine, which is the very, very end of the spectrum, the dry, the, sorry, the, the sweetest uh, extreme of the uh, spectrum, and also the darkest of all uh, sherry wines. Travelers have been coming to the Jerez region for thousands of years because of the wine. The Phoenicians were the first to begin cultivating vines in Andalusia around 3,000 years ago and relics of their presence are still here. It is believed that the warm climate enhanced the strong, sweet nature of the wines, allowing them to stand up well to long journeys. The special climatic conditions of the Jerez area are very important in terms of producing the unique wines of a very small geographical area known as the Marco de Jerez. The moist Atlantic winds, combined with these long, sunny Mediterranean days, make the growth of three different types of grape possible. Fino Palomino, Pedro Jimenez, and Moscatel are the three varietals that go into making up the special wines of the Jerez region. This white chalky soil, known as Avarizo, has a very special quality of water retention. Even though it looks dry and flaky now, when the rains come in the winter, the soil retains the moisture, enabling the grapes to be fed with water throughout the summer, the long hot summer, until this time when the grapes are ready to be harvested. The three main sherry producing centres of Jerez de la Frontera, San Luca de Barameda and El Puerto Santa Maria all have their own microclimates, as well as unique charms for the traveller. It is possible to travel the same roads as earlier travellers to sample the wines of the region. The wine route of Jerez was recently opened by the Jerez Sherry Council and the Spanish Ministry of Agriculture, specifically for the purpose of wine tourism. We are lucky enough to know the opinions and thoughts of many different types of traveller of the past particularly in the travelogues produced in the 19th century. Spain became an essential destination on grand tours undertaken by Europe's aristocracy, who would marvel at the huge royal wineries at Jerez. Richard Ford noted the grandness of these sites, saying that these temples of Bacchus resemble cathedrals in size and loftiness. These magnificent structures can still be seen today, but as typical of the experience of the modern traveler, tradition is often mixed with the modern, Alongside the traditional bodegas can be seen architecturally stunning new temples of wine. And as you can see, this can truly be called a cathedral of wine. The other factor in the resurgence of sherry is the growing phenomenon of wine tourism. With the opening of the wine route, the modern traveller now has the opportunity to see the process that goes into making the wines, to meet the winemakers, learn about the staggering diversity of the combinations of sherry with food, and of course, taste some of the best wines the region of Jerez has to offer. Along with the architecture of the bodegas, the production of sherry is another example of mixing the virtues of the traditional with the improvements of the modern. The Solera system is a good example of this. 
The Solera and Criadera method is unique to the production of Sherry. Sherry is a blended wine and a mixture of young and aged wine of similar character. The oldest wine in the process is held in the Solera, the bottom row of oak barrels. From time to time, some of this wine is drawn for bottling, but never more than a third of its content. The removed wine is then replaced with younger wine from the first criadera, or cradle, the row of barrels stored above the solera. Then the void in the first criadera is replenished with still younger wine, located one row above, and so on. Depending on desired age and quality, this process may be shortened or extended, which has the advantage that a consistent quality of wine can be produced. Perhaps the most important aspect of this very ecological process is the unique nature of the velo de flor, or the veil of yeast which covers the top of the wine in each cask. In the manufacture of sherries, the oak barrels are only partially filled to allow the floor yeast to take form. During the fermentation phase of sherry production, the floor yeast works anaerobically, converting sugar into alcohol and eventually breaking down and converting acids. A waxy coating appears on the cell's exterior, causing the yeast to float to the surface and form a protective blanket thick enough to shield the wine from oxygen. This process drastically lowers the acidity of the wine. Well, not much. Um, in fact, I would say that from the part of um, aging and maturation, um, from the part of viticulture, it hasn't changed at all. You know, to produce cherry and manzanilla, the most important part of the whole process is the time that the wine is spent in the cellar, aging in, in, in American oak cask and maturing there. So this hasn't changed at all. It's still the same process. What happened is that, for example, for transferring the, the wines from one cask to another or from one cask to the bottling line, instead of doing it by hand, with buckets, uh, we do it now with very modern and sophisticated pumping machines. Probably are managed by computers. La principal diferencia, desde mi punto de vista, es el control que se ejerce sobre el proceso. Afortunadamente, ahora disponemos de una serie de, de, de máquinas que pueden analizar muchísimos parámetros que antes no se hacían, antes todo se hacía de una manera más empírica, y ahora podemos ejercer un mayor control en el proceso, lo que nos garantiza la calidad y la seguridad. Talking about another changes is is the yeast, right? The velo of the floor. The velo of the floor, yeah. of course. We can't control the yeast and we know a lot of the yeast right now, so we can't have the best, you know, quality during the whole process because we we, we get the whole knowledge of the yeast. I would say that the fundamental um, elements, the essence of sherry production has not changed over the years. I mean, it's still uh, Mother Nature working hard and uh, human beings trying to choose uh, the best out of that work. The technology at the end helps you to, as I was saying, to reproduce those, um, those uh, processes, uh, to simplify them at some stage, and uh, to make sure that uh, basically the wine reaches the final consumer in the best of the conditions. To that person, I would say, here you have the most exclusive wine in Spain. This is a thoroughbred in the wine um, uh, collection. This is a pure sound. This is a, an authentic product. Um, and is very um, exclusive from a very uh, um, concrete area. Well, it's, it's not easy to describe a product which uh, comes uh, through all your senses, no? I mean, color, uh, nose, uh, palate, uh, bouquet. Uh, but if I were to define uh, sherry, what is to me synonymous of sherry, it's um, um, basically uh, a wine to, uh, which enhances food uh, to be shared and which adds pleasure and complexity, complexity to your taste buds. I think in, in, in today's hectic world, uh, having someone to offer you one hour or two hours of their time for you to tell them uh, what there is behind a glass of sherry 
it's a luxury on itself. No? And um, I think uh, we need to take advantage of that. Nowadays, it's, it's very difficult through communication, through uh, advertising, to convey everything that there is behind uh, a glass of sherry. From a personal perspective, certainly, it's, uh, you know, sherry is, uh, is not only my, my job, my passion and my, uh, my roots. Uh, I'm, I was born here, I've lived uh, here for most of the time and I've been lucky enough to travel all around the world, uh, you know, trying to explain what sherry is all about. Uh, for me, is is pretty much the, uh, my culture, my, uh, this is uh, particularly related to the fact that unfortunately the name sherry is being used to describe some other products. So coming from Jerez, having learned, having really be, uh, having absorbed all the cultural aspects of sherry, uh, when I go to places like the States or South Africa or Australia and I see that they give the same name for that stuff, oof, that's hard, <laughs> hard to accept. <laughs> Some would say that the most important aspect of wine tourism is of course in the tasting. And the wines of Jerez are a million miles away from the warm, sickly sweet drink of common British perception. Our 19th century friend Richard Ford was glowing in his praise for Spanish wines, and especially those of Jerez. The wines, he says, under a latitude of where a fine season is a certainty, might rival those of France. Yet perhaps one thing that would have been surprising for Ford, and certainly was for me, is the way that the wines of Jerez are used to staggering effect in local cuisine. The most common usage for sherry in British cuisine is as an added ingredient to trifle. Though contemporary chefs such as Heston Blumenthal are celebrating the potential of sherry and modern cuisine more and more. But in the Jerez region, the gastronomic possibilities seem endless. Local seafood, fish, meat, vegetables and desserts are all combined in the most creative way, mixing tradition with innovation. Overall, the combination of tastes and sensations can be exhilarating. I met with Fernando Cordoba, the renowned chef of the El Faro restaurant in El Puerto Santa Maria, to discuss the relationship of sherry and food. For me, El Jerez is not just a wine that serves to accompany the food, as you have seen in the menu sino yo lo utilizo como un ingrediente más, como una especie de los platos que preparo en el restaurante. Si no tuviese Jerez, no se haría, porque es, junto con el aceite de oliva, parte, parte fundamental de, de mi cocina. El vino de Jerez tiene la particularidad de que cuando tomas un sorbo, dura mucho tiempo en la boca, entonces combina muy bien con muchos platos porque tiene más persistencia que cualquier otro vino de ah. otras características. Y para mí la combinación de lo fino, la manzanilla, con marisco, pescado, y por supuesto con el embutido, el jamón, la mojama, que es un, un embutido de la mar, atún seco, creo es que es la mejor combinación que puede existir con, con los vinos de Jerez. En este caso, fino, manzanilla y también amontillado. No trip for the contemporary wine tourists will be complete without sampling the cultural uniqueness of this part of Spain. Once again, the experiences are a combination of the traditional and the modern. Flamenco artists perform their passionate dances, and the famed Andalusian horses perform at the equestrian school in Jerez, just as they might have done in the 19th century. Travelers of the 19th century may have also attended the annual harvest festival here, which happens in Jerez every September. As I quickly discovered, the wines of Jerez are an imminent part of the region's cultural tradition and identity. Well, I think uh, the fact that uh, wine has been produced in this area since uh, time immemorial, I mean, as you know, the Phoenicians used to produce wine here, and we have uh, proof of that. The Romans, the Arabs kept on uh, cultivating their vines uh, back to our, uh, to our days, um, has made sherry uh, totally integrated in our everyday life and that uh, when you go out in Jerez uh, now that we are at the end of the summer but still we have uh, long days and uh, people come out and uh, have the tapitas uh, at the end of the day well you can see it all over the place no the consumption of Jerez and especially manzanilla 
is uh, totally connected to, uh, for example, the Andalusian uh, uh, celebrations. Um, Andalusian celebrations, I'm talking about festival, ferias, and pilgrimage, uh, uh, romerias. And of course, to all the flamenco culture. I believe that uh, any wine lover coming to our region will not only enjoy the bodegas and the wines, but uh, a much more you know, wider experience. Many of the bodegas also have their own art collections, and the works of El Greco, Goya and Picasso adorn the walls in adjoining rooms to the slow process of the fermentation of the wine. Perhaps the principal difference between travellers of the 19th century and now is that the people of the region of Jerez are aware of the importance of wine tourism to their own future. Modern needs are catered for, but without compromising the soul of the region. The awareness of wine tourism does not diminish the uniqueness of the region, nor indeed the experience of travelling there. Tourism, enotourism, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the potential of all this area as a, as a source, as a, as a place to be used uh, to, uh, to attract uh, people and communicate to them all the uh, culture of Sherry has become uh, an increasingly, increasingly uh, uh, you know, uh, important activity for most of the bodegas. Obviously, uh, the Consejo is coordinating uh, many of the initiatives. Uh, particularly the uh, Ruta del Vino, which is the, uh, the wine route uh, uh, is, which, is, uh, which started last year to attract the uh, uh, specialized tourism. That's the aim of the uh, Ruta del Vino. And I'm sure it will become uh, very, very important for all of the bodegas and for the region itself. Simply the architecture of these buildings is interesting, but on top of that, if you um, explain as we do now, the connection between um, the wine, the history, and the, um, the gastronomy, all that together. Um, as I say, it is an enormous potential which we have to explode much better. If there is one thing that I, to me, have absolutely no doubt, is that when you come to Jerez, you discover the wines. And that's why I say that if you're a wine traveler, you have to come to this region, because you have, you, you're gonna notice you're going to find things that are no other, ra no other part in the world you can, you can find. The Spanish say that nothing symbolizes the country more than the hospitality with which they greet a stranger. Handing them a glass of wine with one hand, laying the table with food with the other, this is the true essence of the Spanish character. This is perhaps no more true than here in the historic city of Jerez home of the most internationally famous of all the wines in Spain, Sherry. Mm -hmm.